Hello AP Calc students, how you doing? This is Mrs. Deach. Uh, welcome to the lesson on Section 8.4, Trigonometric Substitutions, and this is the first day. We're going to be spending two days on this section. So again, hopefully that underscores the importance that you really need to master this. All right, no pressure. Okay, here we go. So first of all, after this lesson, we sh you should be able to integrate expressions um, in your integrand that involve the square root of a squared minus u squared, where a is some constant and u is a differentiable function of x, or square root of a squared plus u squared, or square root of u squared minus a squared. Okay, So you're looking for those kinds of expressions somewhere in the integrand. Okay, To do this, we're going to use Pythagorean identities and their rearrangements, and I've listed a couple of them. The two biggies we use are cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, and we often will rearrange that into cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x, or sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. The other one we use a lot is 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x, and the rearrangement of it, tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x minus 1. So I've bolded the ones we're going to use a lot. All right. So here's an example. So suppose you have this integrand, and you look at it, and you go, hey, it's like one of those types. This would be my a squared minus u squared. Okay? And so what we're going to do, just to show, give you a, a taste of what's coming up, we're going to let x equal sine of theta. All right? And so then the next thing we do is we're going to take the derivative of x, and of course the derivative of if x is sine theta, then dx would be cosine of theta d theta. And you notice you don't have a cosine in there. All right, but okay. And then we're also going to reassign the endpoints of integration. And we're going to use this little relationship right here to find the x, x value is equal to the sine of the angle. Right? And so if x is 1, then I'd have 1 is equal to the sine of theta, and we're going to use angles in the first and fourth quadrant. So theta would have to be pi over 2 to get a positive 1. We know that the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So when x is a 1, theta is pi over 2. And if x is negative 1, then our theta is negative pi over 2. You could also use 3 pi over 2. But since I've got negative 1 as the lower end point and positive 1 as the upper, I kind of want to stick with that. I want an angle that's smaller than pi over 2, so I'm going to go with the negative pi over 2. So I'm using fourth and first quadrants there. Okay. Okay, so now my integral. When I rewrite it, it looks like this. So I've replaced negative 1 with negative pi over 2, and I've replaced positive 1 with pi over 2, and I've replaced my x with sine of theta and I've replaced my dx with cosine of theta d theta. Okay, now we'll be able to solve this one. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace, I'm going to do the Pythagorean substitution. 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. And of course, we can take the root, the square root of cosine squared theta. The square root of cosine squared theta is cosine of theta. So this becomes cosine of theta times cosine of theta is cosine squared theta. Okay, I'm going to use a power reducing formula on that like we were doing in section A3. Um, let's see, I pulled the one half out in front. Okay, so now I just have to integrate 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. And that's not too bad. If you integrate that, I've still got the one half out in front here, but the integral of 1 in terms of theta would be theta and integral of cosine of 2 theta would be 1 half sine 2 theta. And now I just have to apply the first fundamental theorem of calculus and evaluate that integrand from my endpoints of integration. Okay, and so I plugged all that stuff in. I've got the 1 half out in front, and I've put the pi over 2 in, in the formula right there. And then it would be subtract what you get when you put negative pi over 2 in my integrand. Okay. And if you do all that very carefully, you'll get pi over 2, which is the correct answer there. Remember, sine of this guy right here, 2 times pi over 2 is pi. Sine at pi is 0. Same thing here, sine at negative pi is 0. So those things end up zeroing out. So that equals 0, that equals 0. And so you have 
um, pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 would be pi, and then you're multiplying by half, so you get pi over 2. So that's how that works, okay? All right. Now, here's the common trig substitutions we're going to use, and we're going to use it for values a is greater than 0. Okay, if you have an integral that involves the expression a squared minus u squared underneath the radical, then what you want to do is let your u be a sine theta. Okay, and I'll show you why that works. Then a squared minus u squared, if you replace the u with a sine theta, you end up with a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. And if you take that little expression there and you factor out the a squared underneath the radical, underneath that radical, now you'll have 1 minus sine squared theta, which we replace with cosine squared theta. So now the stuff under the radical is a squared times cosine squared theta, and we can take the square root of that, which is a cosine theta. And again, cosine's positive in quadrants uh, 4 and 1, right? So that's why we're saying in quadrants 4 and 1. You don't really need any other angles in that. As soon as you go over um, 90 degrees, then, you know, it's kind of like it'll work for um, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. Okay, now here's one other thing. You know, we're going to do this substitution, and we're going to be working with the a's and the thetas and that sort of thing. But when we get done, we still have to go back and unsubstitute, so to speak. And here's how we'll do that. When we set up our u, we set our u is equal to a sine theta. Okay, and if we solve that for sine of theta, we do a little rearranging there, we get sine of theta is equal to u over a. And what we'll do is we'll set up a little right triangle. And we'll set up our right triangle, and then we'll pick a acute angle to be the reference angle. And we'll set it up so that u is the opposite side, and a is the hypotenuse. And then we can go ahead and solve the missing side. And again, you'll notice... Gee, it's going to look just like that, right? And then I can um, figure out what the sine of theta is and what the cosine of theta is. It would be all these ratios involving those expressions. And I'll show you some examples here in a bit. Okay, now if you have an expression um, that involves the square root of a squared plus u squared, what you want to do is let your u be a tangent theta. Okay, and then a, the square root of a squared plus u squared becomes square root of the quantity a squared plus a squared tangent squared. Just like before, we're going to factor the a squared out, out of there underneath the radical. And you have 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is equal to secant squared theta. We do that little Pythagorean substitution there. And then again, we can take the square root of that, and we get a secant theta. And again, theta is going to be an acute angle, so it's between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, now again, when it's time to unsubstitute, you got to get rid of all your, your thetas. What you do is you use a little right triangle. So you go back to where you set up u is equal to a tangent theta and solve that for the tangent of theta. So if I just divide both sides by a, I get tangent of theta is u over a. And then you set up a right triangle. You pick the acute angle here to be theta. And you set it up so its tangent ratio is u over a, so opposite over adjacent. And then you solve for the missing side. And then if you have to evaluate the cosine of theta or the sine of theta, you'll replace it with these little variable expressions. Okay, now this is the other one. You know, a squared a is a constant. u squared is u is a differentiable function of x. Well, what if the differentiable function of x is first and it's minus the constant squared? Well, then what you want to do is your substitution is let your u be a secant of theta. Okay, so then the square root of u squared minus a squared becomes the square root of the quantity a squared secant squared minus a squared. Okay, and then you factor out the a squared underneath the radical. And secant squared theta minus 1, that's equal to tangent squared theta. So again, we use that Pythagorean substitution, and then we take the square root. Now tangent, depending if you're in quadrant 1 or 4, we're talking acute angles here, so there are always angles between, uh, they're less than 90, right? Um, you'd have to know which, which quadrant you're in to know whether you should be using a positive or a negative there. All right, and again, 
when it's time to unsubstitute, to go back and put everything in terms of X's and A's, um, what you'll do is you'll make a little right triangle there. And remember that was our initial premise is that U is equal to A secant theta. So we solve it for secant of theta. So secant of theta is U over A. And then you set up your right triangle. Remember secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So I'd make my hypotenuse U and my adjacent A and then I'd solve for the missing side. And it's no mistake, it looks just like that, right? Okay. So let's let's do one of these. Okay, so right away I look at this thing and go, okay, wait a second. That looks like an A squared minus U squared. Now the first thing you should do is you could go, oh, maybe it's an arc sign, right? Unfortunately, that doesn't work because your U du relationship is not working. If you let U be 25 minus X squared, your du would be 2X dx, right? Negative 2X dx, actually. And that's not going to work with that. You've got an X squared up there. So then you got to think, okay, well, here's another option we have. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to do one of those substitutions I was just talking about. Okay, but you want to look at that like maybe I could do an arc sign first of all, but that's not going to work here. So again, if it's a squared minus u squared, you are going to let x, so, oops, come on, right, right, right. <laughs> Stylus not happy. All right. Okay, so we're going to let, and just like we said in those, in that little blue box you have on your note sheet there, you're going to let x equal 5 sine theta. Okay, and so then, you know, this will x squared will be 25 sine squared theta. Okay, um, the other thing we want to do is figure out what your dx is. And that'd be 5 cosine theta d theta. Okay, and then the next thing we could do also, you might want to, eventually we're going to make a little triangle here maybe. And so sine of theta would be equal to x over 5. And you could set up a triangle right away if you wanted to. My theta is not drawing. There we go. Okay, a little delayed there. Okay, you pick one of your acute angles to be your theta, and you set it up so opposite of theta is x, and hypotenuse is 5. And the missing side here is the hypotenuse squared, which is 25, minus the leg squared. Okay, we might need that later on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace all of my x's in my original integrand with our 5 sine thetas. So I'm going to have 5 sine theta squared in the top. I'm going to have over the square root of 25 minus, okay, x squared, if I square this guy, I get 25 sine squared theta. Okay, and then I also have to replace the dx. The dx is replaced with 5 cosine theta d theta. So you replace all those pieces in terms of theta. And one word to the wise, it's sort of like style points, and I realize this, but it's not really cool to have x's and thetas in the same expression, in the same integrand. Once you do the conversion, get everything set up, and then replace it all. I should never see an integrand that has both, both x's and thetas. It's not a huge deal, but it's kind of, um, I don't know what you want to say. It's like an I ain't got no in English, right? It kind of, it's like fingers on the chalkboard, fingernails on the chalkboard, right? Squeaky markers on the whiteboard. There you go. Okay, so now what we want to do is just go ahead and simplify this thing. So there's a few things we can do. I mean, we got fives all over the place. I've got five there, and I've got a five getting squared there. So that's 125. And let's see. So let's take that out of there. Okay, and then I've got sine squared in the numerator. And I've got a cosine theta in the numerator. And then down here... Can everyone see you got a 25 in there? If I factor that out underneath that radical, it's 1 minus sine squared theta. And that is where we're going to replace that. Okay, we still got the d theta there, right? Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace that 1 minus sine squared with cosine squared.
Now this is going to be 5, and this would be cosine squared, but when you take it square root, you get cosine of theta. Okay, so I'm doing a little simplification there, because you'd replace 1 minus sine squared with cosine squared, and then it's underneath the radical, so you'd take it square root. And then what happens is these guys cancel, right? Now I'm also going to put this 5 out. Now that's in the denominator, so it's actually 1 fifth. So now we're back to 25. And you've got sine squared theta d theta, which isn't too bad because we were doing those a couple days ago, right? So what do we do with those? Power reducing, right? So we'll replace that with 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. We'll double that argument, which is a theta, over 2. Okay. I'm going to take the 1 half out of there. I'm going to have 25 over 2. Okay, can you integrate those? I pulled the 2 out. That's where this 2 in the denominator here is coming from. Okay, the integral of 1 would be theta. We're doing this in terms of theta right now. And then we would have minus, it'd be 1 half sine of 2 theta. Okay, are you impressing the heck out of yourself with how well you can integrate? <laughs> All I have to say about that is don't let it go to your head. Be careful. Double check, okay? If I took the derivative of sine of 2 theta, I'd have cosine of 2 theta times 2. That's why I need the 1 half there, right? Okay. So now once we have that, now you're supposed to be integrating in terms of x, not in terms of theta. So this is where this little triangle is going to come in, because now you have to go back and fix those. And before I forget, let's put my plus c there, okay? All right, now here's where we're going to use the little triangle. We have the 25 over 2. Okay, and um, theta, now what is theta equal to? Actually, I don't have enough room here. I don't even want this arrow there. Are you guys okay if I just draw a line? This is what you guys do in your papers, right? Cool. <laughs> it's thinner. Okay, so now I have the 25 over 2 out in front. Okay, now theta, what I have to do is solve for theta. Now I can go up here, there's, you know, there's so many different places I can do this, but right here, I can solve this for theta in terms of x. I'd have to do inverse sine of both sides. So theta is equal to the arc sine of x over 5, right? Inverse sine of x over 5. Okay, you got to get rid of every theta in there. Okay, minus 1 half. Now, this one is kind of tricky. <laughs> because, do you recall, and you know already I don't want to break my rule there. I should have done this first. My apologies. Sine of 2 theta, I don't have a 2 theta. My triangle isn't 2 theta. My triangle is just for theta. But there's a little trig substitution I can do there. Do you remember that for the double angle formula? Let me write this again. Okay, theta. And then I could write this as 1 half. Okay, sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, right? Okay, I'll put the plus C out here. Okay, now we're ready to go. 25 halves. Put my equals in there. Okay, theta we said is arc sine of x over 5. And the 1 half and the 2 are canceling each other out, right? That equals a 1. Okay, so it's going to be minus. Okay, the sine of theta. Now you look at your triangle here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That'd be x over 5 times cosine of theta. That'd be adjacent, which is 25 minus x squared over 5 plus c. Now, I would be willing to bet on the AP exam. I don't know, because this one you can't really take the 5 out because the inverse sine is in the way. Who knows how they'd write it? Probably 25 halves arc sine of x over 5 minus, let's see, if I multiply this by 25 halves, the 5's cancel, right? 5 times 5 is 25. And so I'd have x square root of 25 minus x squared. And the denominator there would be just a 2, and then plus c. Ta-da! There you go, huh? How good are you? 
Just amazing, isn't it? Look at all that gorgeous work. You really have to be on the ball here. You have to be so careful. So, uh, you know, I, I say this a lot. You know, a lot, of, a lot of you guys, your handwriting isn't very good because you haven't had to have good handwriting. You've been keyboarding since you could walk. You know, unlike people like me who we grew up and we had to handwrite everything. So the handwriting skills aren't always there, but they have to be there. You got to start being really careful about, you know, your fives should look different from your S's and your fours and your nines. You have to be able to tell those apart. So handwriting matters now. So you got to be very careful. All right. So let's do one more and then we're done. So now this one is very complicated. Notice you've got this expression underneath there and it's the ex that's supposed to be an exponent. It's to the three halves. And if you rewrote that, the denominator is the root you're taking. So you're taking the square root of x squared plus 4 and then you're cubing that. So do you see where this trig substitution stuff comes into play here? You're going to use you're going to let x equal, now this is my a squared, right? So a is a 2. So we're going to do, x is going to be equal 2 tangent of theta. Okay, and dx is going to be 2 secant squared theta d theta. All right, so we have that. And furthermore, if I solve this top expression x equals 2 tangent theta if i solve it for tangent of theta this is to set up my triangle when i'm done i might have to go do some replacements tangent of theta is x over 2 so we can go ahead and draw our triangle now if you like you might need it in the end sometimes you can wait with this because sometimes you end up not needing it but okay opposite over adjacent. That's our tangent ratio. So this one is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. So x squared plus 4 or 4 plus x squared or however you want to write that. Okay. So there you go. There's your triangle. We might need that later. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our substitution now. I'm going to pull the 3 out in front. I don't like those coefficients in there. I've got a real, I've got a real problem with them. <laughs> I have a lot of problems. Okay. Um, you say, yeah, I noticed. Um, let's see, that's going to be dx over, let's see, down here we're going to have, if we do our substitution, we're going to have 4 tangent squared theta plus 4. Now that's getting cubed, so you've got to be careful about that. Okay, so inside here, that's going to be the square root of 4 times tangent squared theta plus 1 and that whole thing is getting cubed. I'm sorry you're having I was just talking about your handwriting should be neat and you can hardly read mine right I'm so sorry. Uh, they can send a man to the moon. They can send a rocket ship to an asteroid. Now I can say that right? Did you guys hear that a few days ago? This will really date this video. They landed a, a probe on an asteroid, the U.S. finally did, and they took some samples. Pretty cool stuff. Hey, you could be working for NASA someday. All right, let's go and take the squared here. Now this guy right there, tangent squared plus 1, that's secant squared. So you've got 4 secant squared underneath the radical, so that's equal to 2 secant of theta, and that's getting cubed. You know what I forgot to do? What did I forget to do? You tell me what I forgot to do. Bam. Remember how I said you shouldn't have thetas and x's in there? I need to listen to myself, right? Is that the old do as I say, not as I do? Probably. I forgot to put in my uh, dx. My dx is 2 tangent theta. Let's see, dx is 2 secant squared theta. Excuse me. Let's put that in there. Yeah, as long as you catch it, right? You go back and fix it. Ooh, that's looking good for that um, my expression over here, right? There's going to be a lot of stuff canceling. So you've got three. 
you've got 2 secant squared theta, and down here 2 cubed is 8, and you've got secant cubed theta. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to have some stuff canceling here. All right, so we're going to have, let's see, a 2 goes in here once, and 2 goes in here four times. So you can have three fourths out in front. And then my secants are canceling. I'm going to have 1 over secant. How nice is that? Because what happens with that is, what's the reciprocal of secant? If you flip secant up into the numerator, it becomes cosine. How nice is that? Okay, then you integrate it. And you get sine of theta plus c. And the last thing you have to do now is you have to replace the sine of theta. You've got to go back and put everything in terms of x. You were asked to integrate with respect to x, not with respect to theta. So now you have to go back and just fix that, and we'll use our triangle to do that. Okay, from angle theta, the sine would be x opposite over hypotenuse. And so there's there we go. It's 3x. And you don't have to rationalize anymore in, in calculus, right? Especially when there's algebra involved. Yikes, that'd be horrible. There you go. So that's how you use uh, trig substitutions to integrate expressions involving x squared, the square root of x squared plus u squared, or x squared minus u squared, or the square root of u squared minus x squared. So now you just do pick the right trig substitution and away you go. The big thing is make sure at the end before you put a box around it that it's back in terms of x's because you're being asked to differentiate with respect to x, not theta. Okay, I'm going to turn you loose. Good luck, and hopefully I'll, I'll see you around. Take care.